If symptoms occur as part of a meaningful biological special program, is their course also meaningful? Do they follow a plan? As Dr. Hammer writes in the second biological natural law, the law of the two phases of all meaningful biological special programs, provided there is a resolution of the conflict. In the normal day-night rhythm, the organism switches between active and rest modes. A so-called conflict active phase initiates the reaction to a biological conflict the organism switches into alarm mode, no matter what time of day or night, to create the optimal conditions to overcome the conflicting situation as quickly as possible. So, you are mostly awake, full of energy, and zest for action. As we have already seen, the consequences on the three levels of SBS are compulsive thinking of the psyche, a symptomless characteristic Hammer focus in the brain, as well as functional changes in the organ. Our tumor patient, whose daughter was hit by a car, will therefore constantly obsess about her child and how she can help her. At the brain level, there is a Hammer focus on the side of the cerebellum. At the organic level, one or more mammary glands will increase their function. Let's say the child is very badly hurt, is now in mortal danger for weeks, and recovers only after a few months. The mother will constantly be in acute concern for her daughter and remain in a conflict-active state. Her mammary glands will work for months at their maximum capacity. But that does not resolve the situation, as in the example of the fox mother, and as anticipated by our biology. Now the cells begin to proliferate in a long-lasting conflict-active phase to better meet the heightened demands. The resulting mass is called a tumor. The longer the conflict-active phase lasts, the bigger the tumor will get. The reason that a particular breast gland or group of breast glands within the breast is engaged with the SBS and not all of them is still unclear. Consider the evidence in reference to. We are, therefore, not dealing with degenerate cells that seek to harm the body, but a biological adaptation process which does not lead to the desired solution. Also, not all tissues react with cell proliferation as an adaptation in the conflict-active phase. There is also the possibility of cell loss, as we will see in the next part. The conflict-active phase ends with conflict resolution when the causal threat is gone and the SBS loses its reason for being. Now starts the second phase, the so-called conflict-resolved phase. On a psychological level, we are relaxed, happy, or even euphoric, as the stressful situation is now a thing of the past. At the brain level, there is a swelling in the associated Hammer focus, which, depending on its size, can lead to various brain symptoms, such as certain types of headaches, nausea, or temporary loss of function. At the organ level, the adjustments and changes in the conflict active phase are now reversed, which is often associated with inflammatory symptoms. For example, when excess tissue is broken down or new tissue is regenerated. Much of everyday illnesses, such as colds, coughs, or sore throats, are usually diagnosed at this stage, as we feel sick, have a fever, we are weak and need to regenerate. Towards the end of the process, scars and other residual states form. In our example, the conflict may only resolve once the daughter is out of danger. The mother is now generally exhausted, but mentally relaxed. The Hammer focus swells strongly at the beginning of the conflict-resolved phase and can cause problems with its space requirement. The organic changes are also reversed in the breast if the tumor has not already been surgically removed. The body decomposes the surplus tissue with the help of microbes, forming pus as a metabolic end product. 
If the duration of the conflict active phase was unbiologically long, as in our example, the extent of the formation of pus can be very large and lead to problems of its own. After complete degradation, scar tissue remains behind, which can also be problematic in many ways depending on its size. The duration and intensity of the conflict active phase roughly corresponds to the duration and intensity of the conflict resolved phase and determines the extent of the expected symptoms, which makes it possible to estimate symptom progressions. In the middle of the conflict resolved phase, but no later than three weeks, there is a particular interruption, the so-called epileptoid crisis, EC. Just before that occurs, the amount of tissue swelling and the other symptoms peak. After the crisis, the swelling recedes, becomes scarred, and symptoms gradually weaken. The epileptoid crisis is thus a turning point at which the organism switches again for a short time into the active mode. Depending on the organ, this takes a few seconds to a few hours. In most special programs, this crisis goes unnoticed. In a few cases, however, there may be particularly strong and sometimes even fatal symptoms, which result in diagnoses such as epileptic seizure, heart attack, or asthma attack. Up until now, we have looked at the simple, singular progression, which is more of an exception for humans. With us, the multiple activation of a meaningful biological special program is a frequent and big problem. Since modern humans generally ignore our instincts and even our life skills hardly allow for flexibility and adaptation, an SBS often runs in an infinite loop. That is, we activate, resolve, activate, resolve, repeatedly for years on end. For example, when we experience a biological conflict at work with an employee, boss, customer, etc., triggering an SBS, an escape into resolution on the weekend or on vacation. Most chronic illnesses are based on this mechanism, which theoretically can plague one's entire life if the living conditions or the personal interaction with them does not change. In such cases, predicting the duration of the conflict resolve phase is difficult or even impossible if the SBS is constantly reactivated. Of what use is the knowledge of the two-phase nature of the meaningful biological special programs? So far, we have often long ignored our instincts, resulting in long conflict active phases and thus strong symptoms. Now, with this new knowledge, we can, for example, identify compulsive thought as a psychic level clue of the presence of an SBS, well before we become aware of any ongoing special program through physical changes. We could then plan targeted actions or strategies that will make a quick resolution of the conflict likely, so that the SBS can be completed in less time and thus be less problematic. On the other hand, a stronger symptom can now be considered differentiated and, depending on the phase, different target-oriented therapy strategies can be selected. Let's take a look at different possibilities for our tumor patient. It could be that she is ignorant of the five biological natural laws and therefore has no knowledge of the cause of her symptoms as well as the current stage of her SBS. Even conventional medicine has no knowledge of this and, in most cases, recommends chemotherapy, radiation, and a radical operation, since a tumor that enters remission without intervention is not possible in this model. Suffering for months on end, disfigurement, and often a premature death are the results. In the best case, breast-conserving surgery can be performed here but the psychologically stressful fear of relapses and metastases remain, just as it does with anti-hormone therapy. That a person weathers this process without fears or is even strengthened does happen, but it is extremely rare. 
It could also be that the tumor patient has reviewed the 5BN so that she does not suffer any otherwise typical diagnostic shock and instead an individual differentiated consideration of her situation is possible, such as possibility one, the SBS is in the conflict active phase. The tumor is still very small and does not grow any further as she anticipates that her daughter will be discharged any day. Once this happens, the SBS will resolve and microbes will help to completely dismantle the tumor. In this case, no therapy is necessary. Only local symptomatic measures should be discussed with the therapist and the proper course of the conflict resolved phase should be controlled. For this purpose, a variety of conventional and alternative medical procedures can be used, which can be applied even more effectively with knowledge of the 5BN. With this insight, the mystery of why a particular method helps in one case but not in another is finally understood. The result is a complete regeneration, possibly with minimal scars. Possibility 2. The SBS is also in conflict active phase. The tumor is still very small, but is expected to continue to grow since her perception is that her daughter is not well cared for in this hospital. The therapy consists here, first of all, in quickly resolving her conflict, or at least in reducing its intensity. For example, by transferring the child to another hospital, one where the mother is comfortable with her daughter's care. This reduces the intensity of the special program so that the growth of the tumor stagnates until the conflict is resolved. Here, as in the previous case, no therapy is necessary, only the control of the SBS's course. Possibility 3. The SBS is also in the conflict active phase. The tumor is already very large and further growth is expected as her daughter's situation is unstable. Breast preserving surgery should be performed here as serious pus formation, bursting of the breast, and other dangerous symptoms can be expected once the conflict resolves. These in turn are more likely to lead to new intensive biological conflicts and thus to considerable, incalculable complications. An operation prevents this. However, the woman now does not need to be afraid of relapses, metastases, or other horrible health threats, and ought therefore to be psychologically relaxed about her own health. Possibility four. The SBS is in the conflict resolved phase. The tumor is already degrading with the help of microbes, which has led to pus discharge which causes the mother to visit her doctor. The diagnosis does not cause her to panic because she knows the connection to her life. Her daughter has recently recovered and has returned home, which is the reason the SBS has resolved. In this case as well, no therapy is necessary, only a check of the proper course of the SBS. There are, of course, thousands of other possibilities that the SBS course may take in individual cases. But by knowing the 5BN, the patient, in almost all cases, has plenty of opportunity to positively influence this course and emerge smiling. Of course, all this being said, the five biological laws of nature offer no promise of salvation or the like. Again, sometimes surgery or medication is needed, and complications or worse may occur especially because our healthcare system does not yet recognize the 5B end, and as a result, patients are torn between different worldviews as part of their therapy, which leads to considerable problems. Taking into account this situation, however, the biological laws offer the opportunity to understand one's own biology and symptoms causally, and through them to derive meaningful therapy options. So in this example, the greatest possible health success is achieved with the least possible effort. Always in this example, without chemo and radiation, and in many cases, even without surgery, leveraging instead targeted changes in living conditions, which subsequent accounts of firsthand experiences will allow us to more clearly explore. Even if the objective criteria were pushed to the foreground in these examples, in reality, the concrete treatment possibilities must always take into account personal individual framework conditions, as these led to the start of the SBS, 
but also contain the necessary options to resolve the conflict or to guide the controlled passage of the SBS. With the knowledge of the first and second biological laws of nature, we can now precisely recognize the cause, the course, and the rhythm of an SBS. But how do we know which symptoms occur in the conflict active phase and in the conflict resolve phase? This essential knowledge is provided by the third natural law of biology, which we will examine in the following section.